Good afternoon. My name is Sergeant Ben Hoster. I'm the supervisor of the Public Information Office for the Scottsdale Police Department. And I'd like to thank you for coming to this press conference today that references our uh, recent protests and looting that occurred last night uh, at Scottsdale Fashion Square and in our downtown Scottsdale area. Uh, we will, I would like to describe the events that will transpire in the order of this press conference, okay? First, we'll hear from uh, Mayor Jim Lane, and his last name is spelled L-A-N-E. After uh, the mayor finishes, we will hear from Chief Alan Rodbell, last name R-O-D-B-E-L-L. -L. And then finally, we'll hear from Assistant Chief Scott Pop, and his last name is spelled P-O-P-P. -P. And after our speakers have concluded, we will open up for questions. Mayor Lane. Thank you. As everyone knows, obviously, we had a serious event here in Scottsdale, and it was brought about by a nationwide struggle with regard to uh, George Lloyd and uh, with the occurrence in Minneapolis. And, uh, but from what happened to us here in Scottsdale, it certainly has been unprecedented. We're all working with a little bit different Oh, all right. Before we get too much further, yeah. Well, what does it say? Kick me or? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll turn it back on. Okay, thank you. Well, just to repeat what I said a little there earlier, and that is the fact that this is an unusual and certainly a first in a lifetime kind of event as far as the city of Scottsdale is concerned. And I believe for most everybody who's in this room who has participated in trying to respond to this. So it's a, it's a work in process and it has caused us to create a, a situation and create a, a response that we have heretofore not been able to have to do. And, and I want to say first and foremost that you know, we've gotten a lot of feedback as to exactly how we handle it. And I do certainly share the community's anger and outrage over the illegal actions that took place in Scottsdale last night. The damage from last night's events is distressing and I'm, discuss I'm discussing today with Scottsdale's response to the incident with city management and the police leadership. We stand with all Americans in seeking justice for George Floyd. I denounce those who are twisting a legitimate desire for justice into mindless and purposeless destruction. These groups and individuals seek simply to divide us, and we must not let that happen. Scottsdale is a golden rule city, and with that, we always carry the, the, the expressed desire to treat others as we would like to be treated and to respect others as we would want to be respected and our community be respected. Scottsdale must remain united, not only for within our city, but within our community at large. Our relationships with each other are, the mo are most important. And no matter race, ethnicity, socioeconomic background, or political affiliation, we must stand together against racism and against those who would advocate the destruction of our community and our nation. To best of our understanding, the agitators of the groups who put this together really have no local connection with it. We've spoken with uh, our African American leadership, and they've been assured, or at least I've assured from those who I've spoken to, that there is no connection uh, with what has happened here with their position and their feelings about the city of Scottsdale. Speaking to both sides of the political, social, and economic spectrum, we cannot allow the forces of evil to create a chaos in Scottsdale or in the United States of America, even if that's intent on advancing a possible uh, political advantage. The strategy of Scottsdale police employed Saturday night through Sunday morning was to contain those with their announced reason of seeking to damage Scottsdale and our citizens Police made a number of arrests for those responsible for the vandalism and looting, and I fully support their efforts to identify and arrest others in the days ahead. We are certainly now faced with a continuing prospect of this being 
reenacted someplace in the city of Scottsdale again tonight. So we stand ready for that. Now, the chief and assistant chief Pop will also be talking toward not only what we have done last night and maybe the refinement of tactics as we move forward, but also how we are going to further coordinate resources and efforts with the state, the county, and other municipalities who have supported us before. So we're looking forward to a coordinated and consistent application of the correct amount of force in stopping further damage to our community, property, life or limb. So with that, I'll pass it over to Chief Rodbell. Thank you, Mayor. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so I've been in this business now for 44 years. I've, at all ranks, I've seen peaceful demonstrations and protests and people working together to solve community problems and, and larger problems. And this is the first time I've ever experienced anything quite like I experienced last night. And whereas I appreciate that some, uh, there's maybe some uh, feeling that this is somehow associated with what may have occurred in another state that's absolutely unconscionable, unforgivable. There's no way to explain away or justify what happened in Minnesota. All law enforcement is appalled by what occurred on that street. But last night was something entirely different. Last night wasn't about protest, although there were some signs, very few, but some signs. Although there was some graffiti, not a much, but some graffiti. Uh, it was clearly these people came down here to destroy property and to steal. And it's as simple as that. And as the mayor mentioned, we plan on going, uh, we're not done. We made a number of arrests last night. People still inside the mall. We did our final sweep, were arrested. People outside the mall, people that brought weapons downtown were arrested. But we plan on taking this a step further. We are looking at ways to bring people that participated last night to justice for again, destroying people's property and theft. I have a lot of people to thank. You know, one of the questions you might have is, why did it take so long to get support to set up? Well, quite frankly, every community in Arizona, and perhaps nationally, is concerned about their own communities. And so it, we had to wait to see where people were going to show up, quite frankly, see where we could get additional resources. And we had tremendous assistance and, and uh, help from departments like Department of Public Safety, uh, Chandler, Mesa, Tempe, Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. They all came out to help us restore order in the downtown. And with their assistance, once it was shut down, the vandalism and the theft stopped. I want to make it very clear, no one was injured last night. No use of force was administered last night beyond arresting folks. And so I couldn't be more impressed and more pleased and more proud of the men and women in law enforcement of this department as well as the men and women in law enforcement that came to assist us. And this is going on throughout, as you know, the Valley as well as Tucson. So what we're going to do, if you don't mind, is I'm going to have Chief Pop come up and give you a briefing, tell you a little bit about what occurred prior to, during, and after, and then perhaps talk a little bit about what we plan on tonight, and then answer any questions you might have. Chief Pop is the Chief of Uniform Services Division, uh, Bureau, and he's my Deputy Chief of Police. And so, Chief Pop, please. I'm going to ask just to uh, give you a, a kind of a, an outliner or a little step-by-step -step of what we did and what we knew yesterday in approximate times that we knew information. Uh, we have a great, great working relationship with uh, Fashion Square and Mace Rich and that property. Uh, we actually have some off-duty officers that work there. We have an off-duty coordinator. Uh, we began a conversation with Mace Rich yesterday, uh, roughly around 2 o'clock. Um, really having a discussion on what was going on uh, locally and kind of across the nation uh, and looking to see what their contingency plans were um, should uh, some unrest come to the city. Uh, during our conversations, Mace Rich on their own made the decision that they were going to close uh, the mall down. Uh, a lot of conversation took place with them about how that would occur, what they were doing, uh, and our support and what we needed from them if they chose to do that. Uh, Mace Rich offered to uh, sign a trespass notice. Uh, they did that for us. So, and it, once they closed, 
anybody that was on their property was subject to arrest for trespassing. Um, I think uh, by those early conversations, a lot of the businesses in Fashion Square were able to take some precautionary measures for themselves. Um, I, I believe Apple Store is probably one of those businesses that did that. Uh, after that conversation, as we move forward, we received information, uh, really a screenshot of a tweet that went out um, talking about uh, being in a protest and or rioting to Scottsdale, specifically uh, listing the location as, they listed as the big five at Fashion Square. It's really Dick's Sporting Goods. So about that time, we really started to ramp up from our end, our response um, to that. Uh, our initial response was to uh, send our field force contingent down to Fashion Square. Uh, our first contact with a group of people was roughly 21.30, 9.30 hours last night. Um, our field force commander met a group of people, roughly 40-ish people that were on the uh, Dick's property. We explained to them that, uh, that the property was closed and if they remained on the property, they were subject to be arrested for trespass. A good portion of those people um, moved off the property. They staged themselves along uh, the east side of Fashion Square along Scottsdale Road. And a small contingent remained back on the property and was very confrontational with the, uh, the field force commander. After a couple more notices, they did leave. Um, our initial assessment when we, when we received this tweet was about 53 people were involved in the chat. Um, so we were anticipating about 53 people showing up that's what our initial um, assessment was when we saw that, that, that first meeting, and that quickly escalated after that. Um, I think estimates at some point in time throughout the night, probably the early morning hours, one, two in the morning, um, as we were moving field force, moving uh, um, some of the protesters, and I, I, won't, I, I use that term very loosely, um, this was more of rioters, uh, at the intersection of Scottsdale and Camelback, as our field force was moving um, people through that, that area, uh, our field force commander uh, turned the corner and had about 500 people surround his vehicle. So at any given time, there was probably 500 people on the overall property of Fashion Square. Uh, our goal at the time was to control the movement on Fashion Square, get Fashion Square uh, under control. So our initial, uh, initial response from our officers at that 9, 10 o'clock, um, Saturday night was roughly 83 officers, and at the end we had assistance from another 163 officers from the agencies uh, Chief Robell noted. So roughly 250 officers on scene, and, it, and if we were able to totally control Fashion Square, we'd have probably need double that. Um, so what our, our intent was to move them off there, uh, those subject to arrest that stayed. Uh, obviously you can see by the, the aftermath it did turn uh, violent. Uh, the protesters, or rioters, did come with rocks, uh, chunks of concrete. We had several officers uh, had concrete and rocks thrown at them. We had a lot of the, the people that showed up were uh, wearing gas masks, masks. They came with milk and spray bottles, water. Uh, they were fully prepared to engage us. We had officers, or we had um, rioters that were armed some that were slinging AR-15s. We had a group of people that showed up that were not sure on our initial assessment if they were with the rioters or they were there to support us, but um, dressed out in, in, in dark clothing, body armor, carrying uh, automatic weapons or, or uh, AR-15s. Uh, so we had to deal with that as we moved people through trying to get control of Fashion Square. Some of those groups splintered off and went into the downtown, so we had separate groups dealing with that. We had our downtown group dealing with uh, a confrontation between rioters and militia personnel. Uh, so we were dealing with a lot of separate calls for service. It took us until about five o'clock this morning uh, to kind of get that whole area under control. As the chief said, we had assistance from other agencies. We literally swept the entire mall property. Um, we did make arrest of some of the people uh, for trespassing on the outside and we arrested um, a group or, or individuals on the inside as well. So those two separate groups will be processing through that. We've been in contact with the city prosecutor's office and the county attorney's office to handle those cases. And uh, right away this morning, we were already had our investigative section out beginning the investigation into all the activity at Fashion Square and the surrounding businesses. Um, 
and now we are already in the preparation for, as the mayor said, preparing for things, uh, potential unrest tonight as well. So we're well on our way to preparation for uh, potential activity tonight. Thank you, Chief Pop. Um, we'll now open up for questions. I do want to let you know that the mayor does have to leave in a few minutes. He has another engagement to go to. So if you have questions for him, please ask those first, and then we'll we'll answer a few more questions. Thank you. Well, you know, I know there's been a good bit of challenge on that particular point uh, and some of the reporting that indicated the presence wasn't there, but it was a specific strategy to protect the general residential population from these groups as they were setting off to potentially go off through into the neighborhoods. So there was an, an effort to contain them in the area uh, and uh, that was on the perimeters at, at points in time. But the fact that there has been at least 12 arrests been made uh, in the process of this, uh, certainly a good bit more damage to the property that were, you know, in downtown in the Fashion Square and of course with some of the dealers, the Mercedes dealership, it is, um, that's distressing. But uh, the overall idea, as I understand it now, the, our function is to protect our citizens, not to protect protesters, Peaceful protesters were not looking to harm, but certainly not to protect agitators who were wishing harm upon our citizens and our property within the, in the city of Scottsdale. So that really was part of that strategy. And I, don't, I can't speak toward how every uh, agency might have addressed that or how they may have defined that or how they may have seen that in the activity. But I'm certainly behind the effort of protecting our neighborhoods from groups that may have ended up running and, and, and marauding through neighborhoods. And so uh, in that sense, I'm satisfied. Can we refine it? Always. Is there always a perfect way to address these things? No. It's all new business really for most everybody uh, on the police force and certainly for myself. Yeah, and as I say, I, I can't speak toward that specifically only because I wasn't down here myself during that period of time. But I do know and I have talked to some of them, and I know that they essentially, out of fear, uh, took, uh, you know, took their own precautions on their property, which is something that uh, we certainly are concerned about when that interaction starts to begin as well. It's another uh, dangerous element. But I think that, as I said, the confinement in the area may not have made them visible in some of the areas they were in. Remembering that the downtown and entertainment district closed down much earlier in the evening, and of course Fashion Square sh shut down too. So uh, s some of that activity, uh, which may have risen in that area, didn't materialize, and we're thankful for that too. Yeah, so first of all, let me, I got two questions. So to your point, any, any citizen that's concerned that we weren't there to, to assist, they need our assistance, should reach out to me, and I'd be more than happy to have a meeting and have that conversation. We had a, a, a limited number of staff available at the time, but it was still a large quantity of officers available. We met uh, with the protesters that had organized the protest to be where they pr organized to be at. And they decide to take off in that area once they were approached and go a number of different directions. So we never really said we're not going to protect this. We're going to protect that first. We were clearly reacting to what was occurring in terms of their plan. And so our job is to protect property and protect individuals. 
but, at, but at that point in time, it was more about making sure no one got injured personally. Uh, either protesters, uh, poor, uh, folks that may have still been working at the mall. We had some people still in the mall. We had to escort out. They were there legitimately. We had to protect them. And we also had to make sure that this didn't spread somewhere where we'd have even less control of the actual movement of the protesters and the rioters. So I would just encourage people, they've got a concern that we weren't there because we were there. I was there. We were there. Uh, and I'm just curious of what they saw and didn't see. True, there was probably some places that weren't covered because there was no threat at the time. There was nobody there. But I'd be more than happy to engage anyone in a conversation about that. I noticed from disappointed people, rightfully so, their property was destroyed. Uh, their, things, were, their, things were stolen. Uh, it, uh, they did nothing wrong to deserve that behavior. Uh, and so it's egregious. So I clearly understand why some people were angry and frustrated, but I do believe that when you look at the end of the night, uh, a lot more property damage that could have been damaged wasn't, and no one was hurt. And that's probably my largest focus, is that we didn't use excessive force on citizens, and that we didn't have any officers or employees injured. So I, and I'm going to work on your question, if I can remember it. So your question was flashbangs. We believe some fireworks were sent off by the protesters themselves. We did not use any flashbangs. We did use some chemical agents. Uh, and as you mentioned, you, know, I, you may not know that spraying the milk in your face to kind of help with the chemical agents. These men and women that, that do this, uh, as I guess this is what they do, uh, are well-schooled in some of the things they can do to sort of counteract some of the effects. It's not foolproof. It's not guaranteed. Uh, but they, are, they come prepared for this. And so, as I said, they had brought some masks, and they brought, they brought some, some products that could help them get through the evening if they get sprayed. Uh, but we didn't send off any flashbangs last night. There were some fireworks, we believe, that went off. And we may have, we don't know if shots were fired, because you can't tell the difference sometimes from a distance. Well, we don't, but what kind of chemical agents were used? Because they had been used last earlier. They were used pretty early in the evening, but it was a, you, you have to understand, if you had never been to, to our mall, please go, spend money. But the point is, is that the mall is a huge piece of property. It's a huge footprint. So you can use chemical agent here, and the crowd just moves over there. And so unless you're going to douse the entire property, which is unreasonable, um, you're, you're, gonna, you're just going to be moving people. We really are not necessarily interested in moving people to certain other places. We like to keep them contained. But the world has changed in our lifetime. Those of us that know anything about prior protests, where protests are skirmish lines, and you kind of face each other, our tactics had to change with the change of times. So we did use them. I don't know, CSCN? We did see some of the clinicians, um, but the first group, it was not appropriate to use that at that time. They were compliant. They were like, okay. Yes. The, the, uh, we did use chemical munitions. Um, the first group, uh, we didn't feel it was uh, appropriate to use any chemical munitions on them. The majority of those people left the property as stated, um, so they weren't subject to arrest for trespass, they agreed. The small group that we had, it was a, a five minute interlude probably with them. They dispersed as well, went off, and that's when the, the, the groups kind of started to splinter from there. Uh, we saw more people come in, and, and then, then it was on to more field force tactics and deployment of chemical munitions at that point, which we thought was totally appropriate. So uh, the first part of your question is when we started, it's been a long couple of days for me. So I, when we started, when we first got the first kind of indication that this was going to occur, we saw something online that, that and, we, and we do look online to see what the feel is of the community, what's going on. So I don't know what time we started. Yeah, sorry. So as, as this is going on in Phoenix, um, we are regional partners and collectively across the valley we've been talking about locations, monitoring. Um, all of us have field force units. We've all been talking to one another preparing and really looking for uh, mining the intelligence to see where we thought things were going to be and preparing to help other regions. Um, an example, Mesa last night didn't have anything in Mesa. Mesa was on reserve, help other people. They just couldn't come to help us when we asked. The first call for assistance from us, we had our first contact at 2130 with those people. The first call I had was with uh, um, Colonel uh, Silbert at uh, DPS. Uh, the chief had talked to him earlier in the day. That was the plan. 
when I called them at 10, um, they were so involved in, in stuff in Phoenix that they couldn't send resources. Uh, right within minutes, we had calls out from our dispatch center to all the other East Valley dispatch centers, and we were uh, afforded uh, the assistance we could at the time. But I think what your question was, when did we start? Uh, since things have been going on national, we pay attention to the national incidents, certainly pay attention to the local incidents, and for us it's really mining that data and information as information is sent to us from citizens. The tweet, I, uh, the, the screenshot of the tweet I got yesterday came from uh, an intern that we had a couple years ago that sent it to an employee here who forwarded it to me, and that's when we started really ramping up that, and I said that was probably around 4 o'clock yesterday where we really started to look at what is the activity going to take place in Scottsdale? So the initial assessment was, you know, 53 people on that tweet or so, um, back and forth. So that's kind of when we start up, that's what we're looking at. Historically, we've had maybe half of those people show up at protests when it's happened before. Uh, that certainly was not the case for this. I don't think we were underprepared, um, but we used the resources we had. We put our contention out there where we thought would have been uh, clearly available to address the 50 to 100 people that we we're anticipating. Uh, and, and as soon as we saw that that was not going to be the case, we immediately made that call for assistance. It just was not available at the time we needed it. It took a while to get there, so we, we worked through what we had. I think we got the assistance we could get, um, and, and as I said, to, to do what we needed, I think we would have had to have double what we had just to handle Fashion Square, not, lo not just the outliers as well. But you got to remember, we have patrol staff and staff working in the south part and north part of the city. We, we split into a north-south deployment, so that Fifth Avenue area, the neighborhoods, those businesses, we had rapid response teams going in there and handling those issues. So. From, from our assistance, I think total that just in the, the immediate field force stuff was about 250 officers. I can't tell you off the top of my head what, what our north and south deployment was last night. Um, I, I know we, we handled roughly 600 calls for service between 6 p.m. and 6 a.m. this morning. Um, we were busy. We were triaging those calls. Um, so, like I said, it, it's not for the lack of anybody in the valley not wanting to assist. Or, not, or us not willing to take the assistance. Uh, when we did get people there, it took a while to coordinate. Everybody operates a little bit differently. Um, we were just sent what people had available. So it wasn't like you got sent a field force, wasn't like you got a SWAT team. Um, DPS called people in and sent people just from patrol districts. So now you're trying to coordinate that, coordinate their supervision, and get them to operate in a manner that is consistent with the chief's guidelines and, and this, the way the city operates. One of the other assistant chiefs right now is on a conversation with, is it the East Valley or the ACOP? He's got the chiefs, but he's got the East West Valley Command on as well. So we, we already have that taking place. We're, again, mining the intelligence and data to see what the, the, the feel is for activity in Scottsdale and preparing for that. Um, we switched our patrol staff and are actually staffing across the organization uh, to really meet the highest demands and be able to have this sustainable for a longer period of time. Uh, so I think we are doing, we are putting plans in place, and we are well prepared for meeting the next, the next phase of what happens. Um, but this has been, as you've seen across the valley, very, very unpredictable and nothing like we've ever seen before. And yes, I did, and, uh, and certainly it, it, is, it does surround uh, the uh, declaration of an emergency, uh, uh, different and certainly from our uh, COVID-19 one, but separate from that, uh, establishing a curfew for the next week. Uh, I'm not sure that that's quite finished, but we're in process of uh, mirroring what is going to be indicated in that in a proclamation on the city level so that we can employ the the kinds of enforcement tools that we would need to 
have on th in that regard. Uh, and so uh, my feelings about that are good, and, and I think it's a good step. But one of the more important things and something I talked with them about last night was the National Guard. Uh, it was a matter of whether or not uh, the National Guard could actually be brought into action. Uh, this is late in the evening, probably midnight or so, uh, that um, whether it had gotten to that point. And it was difficult to get a real uh, solid information of what was actually occurring down there, uh, downtown. Uh, you know, one thing about this is that we are undoubtedly going to be refining our techniques, as both the chief and, the, and deputy chief have indicated. And that's something that is a, a pro in process. Uh, but the numbers of folks that you're going to have to deploy, as we're now being told, because these attacks, which are really essentially just that, there was no formal protest anywhere during the course of this. Now, there may have been some people that intended to, but essentially we had a number of people that were trying to agitate to it. And that call to action uh, that was seen as a screenshot uh, from some a chain of uh, messages that were sent between that 53 folks I think we're talking about, called for people to come to Scottsdale, uh, whether it's to protest or whether it's to riot or whether it's to loot. And uh, so it, it had the desired effect of getting interested parties in that particular type of activity. We are determined more than ever to make sure that we are protecting business property, personal property, and certainly lives uh, with this. So that's what our intention is now. And so I don't think we want to be taken lightly in that regard because we're going to have to respond to that. We do not want our citizens to feel insecure in their law enforcement's ability with the community around and whatever resources become available to be able to take care of their public safety and their security. So, so did you, did you ask the National Guard about that? Or was it part of the Well, it came up as part of the discussion from the standpoint of where we were at. And again, I don't know that I, I had a, a really solid handle as to where we were at at the time. But just in the conversation, yes, that resource would be available. But it's also a, just a known fact that there are some certain things that I have to do and we're we're probably moving in that direction to make sure that that is authorized and uh, that we have uh, a plan for that when, when and if it's called for by the law enforcement here. Well, you talked about that you call on the National Guard tonight about a security preparation. Do you have them available to you? Yeah, sure. So um, that is actually part of the conversations occurring right now at the same time in another room. Uh, we are talking to DPS director about that very issue. Uh, keep in mind, if we call the National Guard in, their job will be to really supplement us on the line and make, maintaining perimeters and safety. Uh, they won't be enforcing the law, uh, but uh, we're quite prepared to take advantage of their resources if available. I, I just want to, again, reinforce one thing about last night. Um, you, people were not going to be able to commit resources to us knowing they need perhaps resources in their own home cities or the state. DPS was committed already to the Capitol, was committed already to Phoenix, and to end their own headquarters building. Maricopa County Sheriff's Office had some commitments in the city of Phoenix as well. What happened was, as soon as they knew that we were the ones that needed to address an issue, they then were allowed to send us their, the reinforcements we needed. They were not prepared to commit ahead of time uh, because they had their own concerns, and they still had their own concerns. This is not happening just in the city of uh, uh, Scottsdale. It's not happening just in the East Valley or the state of Arizona. It's happening nationally. And so we are really working together, very supportive. Uh, the, the, the other chiefs and their departments have been just tremendous. Um, but the bottom line is, is that it's a fluid situation. So we've got our ears to the ground. We are looking at our options, and we're going to probably take advantage of the options that are presented to us. Yes, ma'am. I cannot share all our tactics with you at this point, but I will tell you this, we're well aware of the needs of certain locations in our city that are all very different. And so we're hoping that the governor's uh, order at eight o'clock, I think it's eight o'clock, 
uh, and, and, and because I've not seen it yet. I don't know the details in it. I don't know what, it per, what his order permits people to be on the road to be doing. Obviously, people working in hospitals or, or other kinds of centers would be, be able to be on the road. Not knowing exactly what that says, we do believe that will have a tremendous impact on our ability to make sure people are off the streets after a certain hour and, again, protect property. So I will tell you that we've learned a lot of lessons from last night, but at the same time, it would have taken an extreme amount of resources to, to, set, to actually wrap that mall with protection on every corner, every entrance. Um, I won't go into details of some of the weak points, but it's a if you've not been down there, drive around and see what a, what, a, what a piece of property that is. Attached right to our old town, downtown, attached just right to residential communities, and attached across the street from our entertainment district. That cooperated last night, thankfully. Well, so. Okay, so we have information on, on that location as well. Understand Kirlin is in Phoenix. So we're in contact with Phoenix in terms of how we will partner together because people don't know that. They don't know the streets to divide. And so we are, we are in contact with Phoenix to, to create a deployment plan to assist in protecting those properties as well. Yes. No. Are these we have some information that part of this organization has come from a city outside the valley, and they've had experience in doing this other places outside the valley. And so, um, I, I don't, whether there's a, whether the, one thing about anarchists is they're not supposed to be organized. So as soon as they start getting organized, they can't be anarchists anymore. So no, that's, that's just what it is. You know, if you think about it, they broke windows in a store that had no product on display. There was no product in that store for them to steal. They had removed all the product and locked it up, but yet they still felt necessary to take a baseball bat and break in huge glass windows that while we're there, glass is dropping a distance on whoever happens to be standing in the doorway. And thankfully, no one got hurt. So when you look at that, there's really no rhyme and reason. And so we've got our suspicions. I don't think it's a conspiracy theory. We have our suspicions. But the reality is the world has changed. And there's just nothing about this that's acceptable. And I would call upon leadership, because we are rich in leadership in the, in, in the, in the valley and in the state, and leadership among the people in this very room staring at me, and the fact that the message has to be this is just unacceptable behavior. It can't be this, people are frustrated so they're doing this. There's nothing that equates frustration to burning somebody's business down or wrecking somebody's cars on display in their showroom. That, that's not, there, there's no justification for that. It certainly isn't justification of something that happened some, in some other state, five states away, which was wrong, by the way. So I just ask leadership to take a stance that this is unacceptable behavior and we're going to take the proper actions to identify the people involved. So my commitment to you, because I've got to get the hook, my commitment to you is we're not done. Last can night's you over. Them you quit, What's that? Can you identify the group? Bring them and bring them in by name. Oh, I don't have a name. For, no, I'm sorry. Anarchists shouldn't have a name of a group. But anyway, the point is, is that I can't name a group. But I will tell you that uh, we're, we're not stopped with our investigation, we've started our investigation. We're reviewing things that will help us identify people that were participating in this event and participating in this event in, a, in the wrong way, and we're going to identify them and hopefully bring them to justice. So thank you. I'm gonna interrupt you real quick. The mayor does need to leave, so I'm gonna excuse him now, and then we're gonna go two more questions. Mayor, go ahead, please. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Yeah, and then two more questions, thank you. Yes, ma'am. We, we actually had some of that last night, so I know exactly what we say to them. We, we had people show up last night who offered us assistance, 
We thank them for coming out. We appreciate the fact that they're there to support us. But we asked them if they wouldn't mind just like leaving the area because we felt that was a flashpoint that we didn't want to we didn't want to have to deal with. We had enough to deal with, and we got cooperation. There were some business owners or people hired by business owners to protect some properties, and we were aware of that, and we had contact. And thank goodness, no one tested those th those folks because I have no idea what they're prepared to do. But and we also had someone show up if I remember correctly right around four o'clock in the morning. We had someone show up with a rifle right, right down Scottsdale Road and start loading their rifle. And I'm thankful that the Mesa PD arrested that individual and took them into custody without incident. So we had plenty of flashpoints back there. So I would tell people that, that want to protect their own property to, that I can appreciate that that's the, they want to take that action. I'd ask them to kind of rely on us to do that. I know we failed some people last night, but I once again want to reinforce the fact that no one, no one got hurt last night and arrests were made and arrests will be continue to be made. So um, I, 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 I appreciate their desire to protect their property, but it doesn't help us at all to have more guns on the street with people that may or may not know what, what authorities they have to take the actions they're thinking about taking. It complicates our life. I'm sorry, I heard, am I confident that after 12 arrests were made? Yeah, I'm never confident that organizers get arrested. Okay. Thank you all for doing this. What's that? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you all very much. Appreciate your, your help. That concludes our, our press conference. Uh, I'll be sticking around to answer questions, and those outlets that need the arrest information on our 12 arrestees, uh, we can compile that. So I'll stick around after we're done. Thank you.